You're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on tequilaaficionado.com, part of Tequila Aficionado Media. I'm Alex Perez in Southern California. I am Mike Morales in San Antonio, Texas. And Alex, as we continue our 2016 uh, Sipping Off the Cuffs, we have, we have our first female-owned mezcal brand mm. for, for this year, Santo Diablo. Santo Diablo. I don't know what's so santo about that. Well, you know, I don't know if it's like Santa Muerte. You know, is that is that kind of the same thing? I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, this is an Espadín. It's a 45 ABV. So that's, uh, what is it, 90 proof? It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, 90 proof. 90 proof. This is a brand new uh, item on the market. Matter of fact, it's so new, I haven't touched it. I So this is... This is truly a sipping off the cuff for both of us because you, you'll see Alex open up his bottles way, you know, for the first time. Um, I usually have had a chance to, to taste things, but this one is so new that um, we're both going to pop this baby open first time out. So And good looking bottle, huh, Mike? Yeah, it's, it's got some beautiful graphics. It photographs very well. You may have seen our, on our Instagram uh, and also our Facebook page, you know, we, we've posted a few pictures of the, the bottle. The graphics are very clever. Um, Here is my little... Uh, oh, check you out. Glorifier. Your, your bottle glorifier. <laughs> that works pretty good, huh? Well, you know, it, it really photographs very well because of the frosted bottle <laughs> and the logo. This is a synthetic cork, by the way. It's a, it's a black synthetic, if, in case you're wondering. Um, this is an Espadine. Um, it's kind of gonna, you don't usually see the black. No, um, I'm gonna Often. use a I'm gonna use a Riedel glass for this one. I I, I know that we don't, uh, you know, Mescal doesn't have a, uh, a yeah, bubbles, glass right? yet, but you're using the Glencairn, which I yes. I have become, you know, I gotta say, Alex, that for. For other agave spirits, I think the Glen Cairn has really, really shined. When oh, it yeah. came to, I, to I, Sotol and Raisia. Um, this is a this is a first time with this mezcal. This is an Espadín. Now, Man. as soon as I poured it, Mike, I could really smell. Get some citrus notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It smells very citrus. Citrus right away. Very sweet on on the nose. Very floral. Oh yeah, plural. Um, just for the uh, for information purposes, this is uh, uh, the Maestro Mescalero. His name is Don Adolfo, and and for obvious reasons, there's there's no last name, but um, he is Don Adolfo Martinez, and this particular mezcal is is made in San Juan del Rio. So if you're familiar with that area. Um, for those it's of you, it's a pretty big area for uh, for mezcal. Yes, yeah. um, out there, Oaxaca. I think um, I think uh, uh, Ron Cooper originally was one of the first ones from uh, uh, to get the the single village mezcals, and this particular one is is fairly popular in that area. Wow! Oh wow! There's a lot of going on. You got banana. Yeah. Like ripe right. banana. Oh, this is really nice, Alex. It just comes right up to meet you. And then you get other nuances, obviously, that come from the fermentation. I get nail polish. Really? Not that it's bad, but I can get some nail polish. I, I haven't gotten any of that nail polish. I, I uh, By the way, there's, there's something uh, different about this particular brand. Uh, it is crowdfunded. And um, you can find their video uh, on YouTube. They have a YouTube channel. If you follow them on, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, um, their video that they used on their, uh, on their crowdfund uh, is, the same one, is the same one on YouTube. And it explains the process. It is very much artisanal. And I guess the way, if, if from the information that we're getting from the video, they uh, they sold out their first pallet 
Yeah. So, so we're getting we're getting second batch. And as a matter of fact, Alex, um, I don't know about yours, but mine is signed. So um, in the back here. Um, okay. Yeah, this is these are these are signed and uh, signed bottles and, and, and lot and signed bottles. lot numbers. Um, so I like awesome. what I smell right now. I really this is very very floral to me. Yeah, it's very floral. Um, <clears throat> um, very light uh, on the smokiness. Obviously, you always expect a lot of smoke with with the mezcal. Well, obviously the the maker plays around with that, but it's not not overpowering at all in the in the, in the nose. No, um, this is this is. So, uh, but I do I do get the smokiness or the a little bit of like firewood. Yeah, they're calling it a uh, a, a artisanal artisanally made uh, mezcal so it's it's more uh, I, I I would imagine it's more traditional I I know that some of the process uh, you can see on the video there was no POS obviously and there's not a whole lot of information that we get from the from the website or the uh, it's a sustainably grown wild agave it's left to mature 10 years um, before being harvested and delivered to the Palenque. Uh, and then the master, Maestro Mezcalero Don Adolfo Martinez created a unique mezcal incomparable to any other. But let's see how it tastes, shall we? Now, By the, the way, owner, the, 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 the brand uh, owner, they're out of Los Angeles. So they're right there in your backyard. Right, there. right in my neck of, the, neck of the woods. Yeah, her name is Carla. Can't, Am uh, Amped Man. Amped yes, I can't pronounce your last name. I don't yeah, want to it's it like Ant Man only with a with an M. So and two Carla M's at the end. Amp Man, yeah, A M T M A N N. Wow. Well, she's a, a mescalier. Yeah, uh, apparently she is a a certified mescalier. Um. So, I'm kind of anxious well, to find out more about her. I know that she's uh, right now. We're interviewing her for our Women in Mezcal series, which will be uh, conjoining with the, the, women, the women in the tequila industry. So it'll be interesting right. to see what her, uh, what her insights are. Mm. 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 Ah. Ooh. That's good, Alex. Oh. Wow. <clears throat> I got, I got, the smokiness is down to a minimum, but it's wow. there. I got more earth, though. I think I got more, like, wet cement, earthiness, minerals. It's got a great mouthfeel. It explodes on your palate. It sure it is. It just, <clears throat> it just went boom, and then. Yeah, I got, uh, I took a little too much and got almost wiped out there for a second. <laughs> Alex gets wiped out. Feel me at 11. <clears throat> How's your Very sinuses? Good. Your sinuses feel better now? <laughs> My sinuses are clearing up. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> I, get, wow. I get the banana, the plant, the platano, plantain. Yeah, platano, I do. I'm getting a lot of, a lot of agave. This is... um. This is really different for an espadín, Alex. It's um, it's not like the other ones that we have had from from other regions. I, I'm getting, you know, this is almost more fruity than than. It what, is fruity. You know, there's some of the other ones that we've had. You know, for last year we had Montelobos, we had uh, uh, Gracias a Dios, you know, and, and of course, all the diff, different ABVs and from different regions, you know, the, the different microclimates. Now, I'm getting some other fruit in here. I get really ripe bananas, but what, what else? I'm not, are, I'm trying to Are we getting like point. apples and stuff? I mean, is there some. Mm. Wow, it is, there's a lot going on in this nose, man. Wow. The green apple? Yeah, yeah, and it's just like a green. Well, it's like a more of a green agave as opposed to a baked. I, I'm not getting baked so much as green. Is that is that right? Yeah. Wow, really you know, close to palate. It's almost it's <clears throat> almost as aromatic as the ricea that we've had. 
because that ricea was really really aromatic that was a uh, estancia ricea of course that's a different plant completely but i i don't recall espadine that we've had on our on sipping off the cuffs being this green it's very good you know what i'm getting to is is um um like metal or mineral yeah it, it's it's minerally and and oh yeah um you know the you probably can't see it, it's it's very pristine uh beautiful legs and tears really pretty it, this is this is a this is a substantial you know but it but i have to say it's more aromatic than what what we've had on the show before uh, other than, as far as mezcals, other than, than um, you know, some of the other, uh, uh, like the racia or even the sotol, for that matter. I wonder if the higher proof contributes to that. Well, this is a 90 proof, so uh, it's the, I, I think, I think the terroir also, Alex, I really do think that for the region that it comes from makes a, makes, you know, you're using the same plant, but, you know, the hand of the maker, Different microclimate, different region. It's they're going to taste and smell differently. They're going to grow differently. Supposedly, if we were to believe their website and the Facebook page, they wait ten years before they harvest. And um, it's some, some something bitter in there too. Wow. Cool. And anise. I am really digging this mezcal. Mm. This is really, really something. This is this is this some of the. This is a, you know what this is. This is a grown-up mezcal. <laughs> this is very good. I'm this impressed. Good. I'm. Imp I didn't know what to expect, you know, because it's being, it's it's being advertised. You know, like I say, it's being crowdfunded. Um, it, it um, there, the video shows how artisanal it is, and yet when you read the the crowdfunding website, it's very much a commodity for investors. And you know, from the tequila point of view, having that having a lot of investors, you have a lot of people to answer to. Um, but I tell you what, if the quality of this mezcal doesn't change at all, uh, it's going to go places. I, I'm really, I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed. I love how it just exploded on, right on the attack. It just exploded in your palate. It's like we're everywhere. No, after that, after the few first uh, few sips, it's actually very smooth on the palate. Yeah, watch out for that first one though. That that first uh, that first attack, and it's got a. Um, it's got a medium finish. It doesn't have a long finish like like some of the other ones from other regions that we've had. Yeah. This one has a nice medium finish. It lets you know that it is mezcal. The smokiness, I think, is is downplayed. And what they brought up was was more of the 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 aromas, more of the, the aroma. more the of the flower and fruit. Wow! Very good. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats. This is beautiful. Uh, what do you think, Brandon? Promise. For the Miskal Most category? definitely Grand Province. Yeah, I think so too. This is actually uh, um, different from from a lot of the Mescals we've already tried. Yeah. Uh, again, I think the region has a lot to do with it. Obviously, the, the Maestro Mescalero has a lot to do with it. Uh, the terrible. And, and the way they're making it, I think. They, they yeah. really, it's really have something. Hopefully. Very good. Yeah, hopefully they'll be able to keep up the quality. Look for it. it, it I'm sure it's probably available... Uh, somewhere in Southern California. We hope to hear more about them. Uh, keep an eye out on tequilaaficionado.com where uh, Carla gets to answer our, our, our questions on Women in Mescal series, so that'll happen shortly. Awesome. Uh, other than that, Alex, uh, yeah. hey. Good I'm, stuff. Looks like, looks like they're pretty uh, prevalent in, in Southern California. They're well, in a few restaurants, a few clubs. They're in... They're in Las Perlas in downtown LA. Well, there you go. If it's in Las Perlas, yeah. you know they they they're usually the first ones to step on board if it's if it's really worthy. That's one of the better mezcalerias and tequilerias in in right in downtown LA. 
Uh, congratulations they're to even, Carla, even, Team five. Santo Diablo. <laughs> I'd like to ask her how why the name. I, I doesn't say, doesn't tell me, but you know, hey, Party go Marty. find it, go get it. I hope when it comes to Texas, we'll be able to find it. This, this is going to go great in Tejas. Awesome. I'm Mike, I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. I'm Alex Perez. You're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAficionado.com. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe down there. What is the and button? let us know what you think about uh, Santo Diablo or your other favorite mezcals. Let us know what you're tasting, what you're smelling. We'd love to hear from you. Sure. And as always, sip wise.